So, uh, welcome to Microsoft Malvern. Um, this uh, this has been a complete rehaul of this floor for us. If you were here about six months ago, you won't be able to even get on this floor. Um, so, six is kind of a magic number. We just opened it up about six weeks ago, and the renovation was at a cost of about six million dollars. So. Uh, we really did um, uh, a bang-up job on this. I will tell you that the audio-visual in the room is a little bit dodgy, even though it's new, and we spent all that money, maybe we should spend a little more. Uh, but uh, here we are, so welcome. As far as logistics go, uh, in case of a fire, you would want to go out the same way you came in, of course, unless of course there's actually fire there. Uh, the other exits are off to the right. Uh, the bathrooms are out the door to the right and down the hall. Um, they are a bit uh, <coughs> far and they're off basically. This is not Microsoft's property, that's actually Vanguard's property. So if you go down that way, please go in even numbers. You women should be used to going to the bathroom in even numbers. Uh, <coughs> in case of something really drastic, we do have exits right here. Please, please don't try them though because alarms are Mia. Please don't open these doors, alarms will go off, right? So I wanted to keep the, the introduction part of this probably as small as possible. Uh, however, um, you know, I almost need to justify two hours of your time tonight. So uh, I'm Brett Arndt, I'm a, uh, a Microsoft employee, I'm also the recruiting director uh, for, uh, for the Pegasus organization. We're going to do a lot in terms of uh, introductions and up front there's a lot of people would help bring this event to you this is the first time uh, we've done this sort of event uh, <clears throat> with that I see some people have stuff out to write now so please stop doing that you do not need to write anything down tonight uh, everything I'm going to show you is going to be sent out to you in a PDF format, you can go look at it. In fact, there's resources at the end of this, links, etc. <coughs> I'm not even probably going to show you. We're just going to go going through, you know, go through the whole thing, and we won't even get to those. So, uh, with that in mind, so I started. Joe, or sorry, Bill is already standing. Fran, stand up. So I joined the Pegasus organization with these two other gentlemen in the summer of 2013. Uh, we filled our first team in 2014. I think if you ask me then what uh, you know, what we tried to accomplish as a group, we wanted to make sure that girls were active in athletics and academics, hopefully in softball. I think we carried that through for a uh, number of years. We've taken different paths. Uh, I joined the board for a little bit. Uh, I took a sabbatical from Pegasus for a little bit. Uh, I came back and actually got a chance to uh, be part of Pegasus, uh, Joe, uh, gave me a chance to, to, to do the role I wanted to do. I wrote this role. So what I particularly, what my, my, the crux of my, you know, that is Dingy Rich? The crux of what uh, I cover is around our showcase. So we have a showcase tournament for uh, under 18 teams, under 18 U teams uh, in July, and it sells out um, pretty, <laughs> Uh, pretty quickly, Joe, about February, we, we sell it out. Last year, apologies for that, I just don't know what it is. I said it was quirky, right? Uh, last year, we, uh, we had about 25 college coaches there. Um, this year, my, my goal is to try and get 50 there. We're going to try and double down on that, with my daughter's help. Um, and get more coaches there. So it's something that, although you don't see right now, uh, might come to benefit your daughter later on. Right now, it's probably something you have to help with, right? But it is something that's a security event. All right. Thanks. Thanks, Frank. So I'm doing that. Let me introduce my uh, my partner in crime, Rich Christie. He's the second most famous uh, Richard Christie. If you follow the Howard Stern show. Uh, Rich Christie is here to help me tonight. He's my uh, my technical go-to, and uh, he actually helps me uh, here at Microsoft. We work together as a team. So you can see we're, we're engaged as a team. You can call me anything. All right. 
So a couple shout outs of thanks. First to, to Drew Lukens for helping with the pizza. Where's Maggie? Maggie, stand up. Maggie, stand up. Where's Maddie? Maddie also helped me. I can't throw that far, I didn't even want to So these girls helped out with uh, getting stuff together. Uh, Ron Bond, who I'll introduce later, is also here and helped out with the photography and, and gave me some sources for this. So, like I said, a lot of this is going to be uh, introduction. Now, I don't want to uh, come across as I know everything about recruiting. I'm not a recruiting know-it-all. I'm kind of a learn-it-all. I want to absorb as much as I can. I'm going to pass along to you what I have. This is not in any way uh, a cookbook for the future. All this will change, right, um, if there's anything we can be certain about. So I'm going to do some quick introductions. So if you wouldn't mind standing, Joe. Good job, you're head of games. So over on the right is uh, Joe Harris. He's our uh, president of the organization. Not everybody gets to see him. So we actually do have board meetings that run all year long. We're not just like a summer program. We meet 12 times a year, we try. Um, and Westchester, we actually meet on Monday nights. Uh, what is it, Timothy's? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we meet at Timothy's. And you're all welcome to come to that. Um, a lot of activity goes on. Joe puts a lot of hours into it. I want to ask a question. For anybody that is 16U or younger, can anybody tell me definitively what Joe's oldest daughter's name is? If you get it wrong, you'll get no prizes today. You have to know. <clears throat> All right, I'll open up to 18Us. Nia. It's Bailey. It's Bailey. So the reason I bring this up is. Joe has not had a daughter in the program for a long time, right? But he's still an unpaid volunteer, as all our board members are. Drew's another one that's unpaid volunteer here. Um, <clears throat> and I will tell you, it's funny, I went back to my research for tonight. In 2014, I think Bill and I are exchanging a message where we talked about our program and we were hoping to have, we had four teams, we were hoping to have six teams, right? This year we'll field 10 teams. So I think that's a testament to Joe. So a round of applause for Joe. Remember that name, uh, Bailey. So I don't think Shelly's here tonight. Uh, so Shelly Foraker is our uh, vice president. She basically does everything Joe doesn't want to do. Right? Um, she does a lot of the ordering. Uh, of equipment, she is very instrumental when we do run the showcases. Uh, behind the scenes, she runs that uh, very well. Next is uh, Fran. Fran, darling up, up and down. Uh, this is going to seem a lot like church tonight. So if you're even of the Lutheran denomination, uh, it's going to feel real right like home. So Fran is our uh, secretary um, and does the administrative. I've coached with Fran for a number of years. He's had two girls for the program who have now played college. Um, so he's a great asset to have next week. Uh, Ron Vaughn. Ron's on the right. Uh, Ron is our, I, I figure 411 is lost on the audience. Maybe unless you're older, nobody dials these phones. They're just texting each other. But Ron is our information officer. And I'm going to say that um, I'll make a few bold statements tonight. I will say that our website at Pegasus is the best I've ever seen. And Ron's re responsible for that. He does an incredible job on that. He also runs our communications behind the scenes. We're supported by Microsoft Office 365. We run that as an organization for our email. Uh, and Ron takes care of all of that. So thank you, Ron. <laughs> Any coaches in the room? You want to stand up? Any Pegasus coaches? So thanks for coming. Uh, I think in 2014, I actually kept track of my hours as a coach, and they totaled 347 hours. The reason I did that is because Microsoft reimburses the organization at $25 an hour. Um, that's probably what the average is with time uh, put in to support our organization. So please give these guys a, a round of applause. <laughs> coaches who canceled practice tonight so they could actually uh, have their kids at the event. Uh, that was that was the win as well. All right, so just sort of to close off on my uh, my announcement or my introductions, um, I think this this uh, 
this particular video struck a chord, a chord with me, and uh, I wanted to show it sort of combines what we try to do with athletics, uh, academics, uh, as well as uh, support of my, uh, my employer. So I'm going to try and play this. My favorite subject in school is science, because you can invent all different kinds of cool things, and there's like no limit what you can do. One inventor is Benjamin Franklin. Leonardo da Vinci, Thomas Edison, Albert Einstein, Einstein. <coughs> um, Nikola Tesla, Alexander Bell. <coughs> okay, close. Tonight, uh, I asked some folks who were involved in our organization if they would sponsor us. In other words, I asked them to help pay for pizza. Um, so um, they uh, represent some some great role models uh, in their room tonight. We actually have one person who's played uh, the Division Two World Series, and another one has played in Division One World Series. Uh, so we have a lot of experience in the room tonight. So uh, Michelle Salka, you might know her as Michelle Pavona previous life. Stand up, Michelle. Is here. So Michelle actually <laughs> Michelle actually runs um, an organization just down the road here in Fraser. In fact she has a new organization or a new uh, facility down there that she teaches out of you might see some <coughs> familiar kids there uh, from our from our group. Um, so welcome Michelle. Thank you. Um, <coughs> anybody in the audience work with Michelle? Stand up please. Uh, well, Rhea, I know you have, so you can stand up. There you go. So, um, if you have any questions of working with Michelle, you can ask any of the young ladies who are standing with her. Um, next, we have uh, Julia Sebastian, um, who is a pitching coach uh, out of Delaware County. Uh, <clears throat> she uh, went to school at Elizabethtown uh, in that program. Um, Julie also is a active in CrossFit. Julie, if you want to stand up, please. Thank you. And anybody else, uh, who, who in the room has worked with Julie? Maggie, Rhea, stand up. Great. So if you want to talk to any of these young ladies about their experience with Julie, that'd be great. On a personal note, I want to say that Julie terrifies me. Um, <laughs> Julie in this room is probably pound for pound the strongest person here, bar none. I've seen videos of her competing in CrossFit where she just runs competition into the ground. It's, it's like merciless. It's, it's unbelievable. So um, if you're looking to sort of develop that next level uh, with your fitness, um, let's go there. So we're going to jump and do something a little interactive. Rich, I'm coming up on you. So in, in the Am I wrong? Yeah, sorry. There we go. 
So I thought about um, I thought about actually banning cell phones tonight, but I thought instead we'd do a little bit more of a game with them. Um, so if you haven't downloaded the Kahoot application uh, onto your phone, uh, you can either go do it now, which you're not going to make it for this one, but for maybe other ones uh, that we'll do later on. You can go to Safari and go to Kahoot. Right? So the way this works is, uh, Rich is going to display something on the screen. I'm letting you all log into Kahoot right now. You're going to be asked to enter a PIN number, which will be on the screen. Right? You're going to also be asked to enter a nickname. Please make these PG-13. Because if you win this contest, and this is the only way you'll be able to win a gift card tonight, your name, you'd have to own up to the name you put in as a nickname. Right? So this might be a bit of a deterrent towards it. Right? So the first question, I'm going to give you guys 20 seconds, once we get started, to answer, sorry, 30 seconds, and all subsequent questions are 20 seconds, right? So Rich, let's go, uh, let's go classic. So this is K1? Yeah. All right, so there's the PIN number. So enter that into your application or your website, wherever you're on. Oh, look, like Maddie was the first. Very good. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Okay. How many people are in the room? I had 102 chairs. Oh, so you don't actually have to do anything. Probably, what, 105? There's one empty, two, three empty. 102. We can get more than that. I say rich 50, 60, what do you mean get? <laughs> Alright, so we're going to get ready to start. Like I said, when the first question comes up, you'll see the question, you'll see the responses on the screen, enter on your phone. The way you win this is you have the correct answer and the quickest answer. Go ahead, Rich. Just let it count the whole again. So there'll be a second question coming up. So, very good. 53 of you got it right. Go ahead, Rich, next. Maddie's up. Now the next question is absolutely a softball. You should be able to get this without even looking. This is so easy, I gave you 20 seconds. Is that what you said? For Shelly, why is Shelly not on there? All right, who voted for Ron three times? Come on. I am much better looking than Ron. <laughs> All right, so just trying to give you an idea how to play the game. Let's go to the last question. Let's see who's leading. All right, we have a new leader on the board. I got that one wrong. I think Joe's too funny. It was Jesse. Put your hand up. Very good. Thank you. So we'll do this again. So if you don't have the app or you don't have the, uh, the actual website, I'll get that later.
So it may be easier to think about recruiting in terms of the game of softball, right? There, there's playing rules, or skills, or strategy, etc. Um, so you can see what our general ground rules are. The challenger mindset is something we do a lot here at Microsoft. It's about being comfortable with being uncomfortable. It's about uh, creating tension to elicit a response, usually a change. Um, so we're going to do some of that. Um, anybody that's sitting beside the woman that's rolling her eyes right now, that would be my wife when I talk about actively creating tension. Um, she's lived it. Um, there's a lot of resources we're going to go through. Like I said, most of them are at the end. Um, and again, I will give you this, uh, this slide deck at the end. So no need to write any of this down. Last thing is we are definitely going to have fun. So where, is, uh, where are the student athletes in the room that are 14 you and under? Please stand up. All right, I guess we'll fall over here. Is anybody a 12 you or under? Do you have to sit down? Any 12 no? Very good, lots of good attendance. So anywhere in your household, was there any discussion about, I don't know if this is for me. I don't know if I should be here tonight. Show of hands. Anybody have a discussion or council? That's a fair point. So let me tell you a little story when uh, you, don't, you all can sit down. So when Bill and Fran and I, we used to like to go to the coaches clinic over in Cherry Hill, New Jersey. Uh, it was like a two or three day event where we got to actually uh, listen to Division One and, uh, and so forth uh, coaches talk. In that session there was, a, uh, there was a coach from DePaul University. Any student athlete know where DePaul University is? <laughs> There's actually two answers to this. Coach Long. Chicago's correct. Green Castle, Indiana is also correct. Um, so there's a coach there who said, and a, and a very innocent question came from the audience, and it was basically, at what age should my daughter be looking at doing this? And the coach said, I can't really tell you when you want to have your daughter get engaged in this, but I can tell you definitively that right now, I am looking at athletes that are in the current high school freshman class. I'm looking at ninth grade girls right now. I know I need a catcher, I need a first baseman, I need an outfielder that can hit home runs. We all need that. Um, so this is absolutely for you guys. Um, I know that four years ago, my daughter's uh, a senior. I know that three or four years ago, I didn't have this resource, right? So if anything, it's a good head start for you. And there is actually, we're going to go through by age and uh, talk about what you should be doing at, at, as you're in this class, as freshmen, sophomores, etc. cetera. Um, juniors, you don't need to stand, stand but this, this session today should be absolutely in your wheelhouse. Seniors, you're going to get hit over the head with a few things tonight that maybe you're going to find yourself woefully behind. You still have time. Bear in mind that D1, D2, and D3 all work on different recruiting <coughs> schedules. <coughs> Uh, even D3 helps to push schedules along, however. You know, give you give an example. Uh, Rhea had a, uh, uh, Rhea's my daughter. Rhea had a, uh, a D1 offer that she had to respond to in September of this year. She's a senior. She had a D3 offer that she had to respond to uh, before Thanksgiving, right? So what's funny is while um, when you're an athlete, you're asked to do more to start to begin with. Uh, it also comes into play when, with academics. While some of you have already gone through and applied to college, um, in fact, my daughter's done applying to colleges. She's, she's done her four, she's done. Uh, others in her same class that aren't athletes are asking, how do I do these applications? Right? Um, so everything is accelerated, and it can be accelerated depending upon uh, where you're at. Um, in terms of um, divisions, right? So, in the spirit of having fun, we still have one more introduction to do. So, Coach uh, Sarah Malarico Leavenworth, first of all, thank you for allowing me to use a nickname for you. I don't have to say that again. Uh, she actually likes to be called Coach Mall. Uh, stand up, Coach Mall. Thank you. Uh, so, um, another another wild boast 
Um, I asked Coach Small to do this before I even had permission to do this event. Uh, I absolutely wanted her in the room um, for a couple of reasons. Look at the resume. She's been in high school. She's been in college. She's played in college. She's played on the West Coast. She's played on the South. She's coached in the East. She's coached high school ball. Right. So, um, so Coach Mall is the, the head coach at Wilkes University up in Wilkes Barre. It's a Division Three school. Right. So, please help me welcome Coach Mall. <laughs> Has anybody had a conversation with Coach Mall yet tonight? Any student athlete? Besides my daughter. So uh, I, I make it a rule that I always try and talk to a college coach just as much as I can. That's the one thing I can impart on you. Please talk to them. They are in marketing and sales, even if they don't want to admit it. Right? They are definitely people who want to talk to you. They will, um, they will be able to own a conversation with you. So um, just as a public service announcement, um, Coach Mall is running a few clinics coming up. Um, Catching Clinic, All Skills Clinic, I think Pitching, that is Pitching and Catching, uh, upcoming. We actually publish these, or I should say Ron publishes them uh, on our website. We have something called College Corner on there, which has all these events listed. Right? If you all go look at it and see where things are. Uh, you'll see later where I talk about camps, and going to camps uh, are definitely something we want to do. Now, I would like everybody in the room to please stand up. If you were alive and breathing on this date, you can sit down. You're old and you probably need to rest. Alright. So uh, I want to test the speaker out. Um, and I want to ask, uh, first of all, Coach Mall, this is a date in your history that uh, we didn't really talk about. But uh, on that date you were playing softball. Just to put this age thing in perspective, everybody that's standing was not alive when you were playing college softball. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you may all sit down, except for Coach Mall. So does this date ring uh, true to you? Do, you? do you have any recollection of this date? I do. That would be my freshman year in college. And I was at the Louisiana State University uh, playing in the final game of the regional. Right. Baton Rouge and the team you were playing with? University of Southern Mississippi. Okay. Uh, and you played LSU that game? We did. Uh, Oregon State. At, we beat LSU earlier in the day and went on to uh, play Oregon State for the championship. Okay. I think that was almost at that same day. It was a long time ago. <laughs> Do you remember your role in the game? I was a pinch hitter. Okay. So early, later on we had a section on mental toughness uh, in despite personal disappointment that we'll be able to talk to you about since you were only a pinch hitter that day. <laughs> I'm joking. Uh, <laughs> uh, were, you, were you nervous that day? Yes. Like, 1,506 people in attendance. It was the biggest stadium I'd ever played in in my life. Okay. Before the next week. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you remember the result of well, what you did? So you said you pinch hit. Do you know like what inning you came in or what your result was? Towards the end, I think we were tied or down. Um, I think I hit a double. Yes, you were one for one with a double. <laughs> <laughs> Series. I, I think, Coach, you can have a seat. I think we've tortured you uh, well enough. But, uh, <laughs> so why did I do this? How did I know this? I mean, I, I don't, we're not pen pals. I don't write her that often. Anyone? Status. The topic we're going into can derail the rest of the presentation, the rest of your recruiting. Yes, thank you. The internet. That's a great question. Or it's a great answer. So, yeah, um, for you all in the room, 
the internet never forgets, right? Um, and unfortunately for a lot of other folks, um, it hasn't forgotten for them, been forgotten for them either. Um, the things you put on the internet are very uh, permanent. You're writing in permanent ink. I can tell you in our own organization, I've seen some pretty disappointing things um, where I've actually gone to Joe and said, I don't think this is just bad for this person. I think it's bad for the organization, which is what sort of what I'm shepherding. Right? Uh, <clears throat> with that, um, I've seen things. Um, <coughs> I've seen girls have games the next day, posting, middle of the night. Why? Why? There's a coach that follows. Do you watch? Do you watch? Uh, um, recruits and or your own kids so so we had a, we had a, con we had a conversation <laughs> before, uh, we had a conversation before we came in here and what were you telling me about your one of your students and what you had a discussion if you don't mind um, I our current team um, 17 girls that we start every year off and I explained to them I'll stand up, I explained to them that um, as he said, the internet never forgets. And a lot of what you put out there, whether you think it's you know, questionable or wrong or right, um, it doesn't matter what you think, it's how people interpret it. And uh, we had something that I caught wind of over the weekend, and I saw it, and on the scale of things, it wasn't a big deal. But I did uh, send out a text to the entire team, and I let them know that uh, it was misinterpreted by somebody, and it got to me. And so I had to let them know you know, that there, it, it was taken down, but anything like that going forward could result in the removal from the program um, and a lot of our girls especially nursing education those kind of girls um, that could derail their careers before they ever even start and we had that conversation again so i have to have that conversation a couple of times a year uh, whether something bad has happened or not i make sure that i remind them thanks Coach. you're welcome <coughs> um, so i'm not just picking on student athletes um, so parents in the room uh, when i was seven or eight or so, um, I actually talked the neighbor boy into pulling a bag of leaves on his wagon because I wasn't a moving target when I was shooting my bow and arrow, right? <clears throat> my mother actually looked out the window, caught me, and, you know, intervened, and the guy still had one good eye. <laughs> um, there were other instances where I had this penchant for fire, and I was setting bushes on fire, and uh, neighbor's cat, a couple other things I'm advised not to speak about. Um, but anyhow, back then, pairing was different. You could look out the window and keep track of your kids. So, is there any parent in this room who is knowingly, actively blocked from some of their child's social internet activities? I have one hand, one brave hand. Everybody else can get to their daughter's activities. I'm not going to shame you, I promise. I'm going to shame her. So, uh, is there anybody who has their hand up who also doesn't pay that bill? So, in my household, um, if I pay the bill, you're going to let me see whatever you put up. Or, stop paying the bill. It's a hard parenting decision, but it's also on parents as well right, to, to make these kind of decisions. I don't want to. I don't want to sort of go down this this negative route. So, I'm going to move on. Does anybody know? Uh, I guess that's the title. There, everyone's going to know who this is. This is my former boss, way up the chain. Steve Bonner is a very emphatic uh, presenter, very enthusiastic. That's one way <coughs> to categorize him. Crazy would be another way. Um, he used to run and scream so much he would carry a little thing of honey. Uh, in one of those little plastic bears. Um, now, he's a student athlete, sort of like you are a student athlete, right? Steve Bomber is worth 33.1 billion with a B dollars. He's the 35, 35th richest man in the world. Right? He gave endowments of 50 mil, sorry, 60 million to Harvard, 50 million to Oregon. <coughs> he also owns um, the uh, LA Clippers pro basketball. Um, so maybe he's not like everybody in the room. I got to see Steve speak down in Orlando a couple years ago, 
and he told a story uh, that something his father told him. We're going to try and change this from a negative tone to one more positive. This is real simple, but this goes beyond softball. If you're going to do a job, then do a job. But if you're not going to do a job, don't do a job. This recruiting is not for everyone, right? Playing in college is not for everyone. Um, It's something that you either want to do for yourself, never for your parents, or don't do. I've come back to this phrase again and again in my life beyond just you know, talking about recruiting. All right? So let's get on with uh, a little more recruiting. So let's start talking about some of the numbers that are out there. Uh, I made some assumptions in some of these things. Uh, I gave some examples there of Division I, II, and three schools. There's the NCAA, which you're most uh, familiar with. Uh, you can see uh, Coach Mall's team's in the middle there. Wilkes is a Division Three school. There are a lot of other programs out there, uh, National Junior College Athletic Association, and the NAIA, which is out west, um, you know, uh, particularly. So if I had to guess, if each one of those uh, um, squads are fielding 15 um, players, it's about, it's just shy of 23,000 girls are playing college softball uh, right now. Um, <clears throat> sorry, my, my voice, is, uh, voice is failing me. So a little bit of a ground setting on scholarships. Most people believe that my daughter can play and will go somewhere and get a full ride in college. Um, there, the actuality is 85% of you in this room who, won't, who will play in college will not play on the D1 scholarship. It's probably less because the best players in the country are South and West in the United States. So we're actually under that. So I will tell you that the biggest thing you can take out of this presentation is to focus on your academics. No, your parents did not pay me to say that, mm -hmm. right? But a coach like Coach Mall here loves a student who has a great grade point average, has great SATs, they're going to get uh, merit money, academic money, which is going to be often a four-year commitment versus an athletic scholarship, which he cannot give at D3. Um, which is year to year. Um, so if you think about it, I think um, Division One team, I think Alabama has 19 on their roster right now. So on average, each one of those girls is playing with about two-thirds of a scholarship. I think about two-thirds of the ride. Um, and that's actually pretty close um, to what Rhea's ride was in her D1 school. 65% scholarship. Um, she's fine. Um, I will also tell you that um, even in D1, there are certain leagues like Ivy League, which do not uh, do scholarships for athletics, and even the Patriot League does the same thing, which would be schools like uh, Bucknell uh, locally. Is any of this uh, altering for anyone in the room? Anybody sort of have this information? Any questions I want to have up here? <coughs> All right. So I did some math. This isn't uh, this isn't statistically significant. Uh, this is this is Brett math. This is math that uh, I I randomly selected the names on the previous slide of the schools. I took those schools and I looked at what their average out-of-pocket costs were <coughs> per year at each of the schools and I averaged them. So I have D1, D2, D3, and junior college across the top. Um, I don't think you'll see anything earth-shattering there. Um, D3 schools in general are a little more expensive. They're usually a private school and usually a smaller school. I think you're seeing that reflected in numbers there. Um, the actual uh, GPAs and SATs are not published for junior college, so I don't have that, right? You can see the scholarships that are added to each one of the categories, each one of the divisions, 
right? So uh, there's an awarded scholarship, 12 for D1, a school like Alabama, uh, D2, a school like IEP, and 7.2 scholarships. Um, one of the biggest things I found out in doing the research for this was around junior college. Junior college has actually three divisions. The top division can give out uh, up to 24 scholarships annually. Uh, I, sh I shouldn't say that's annually. They can have 24 scholarship players on their team at any given time. Um, so bear in mind, that's not just per class. So of those 19 on Alabama's roster, only the total number of scholarships must add up to 12. They give out partial scholarships. So if I look at the average athletic award per teammate, I'm just taking the scholarships awarded um, divided by the, uh, by the team size and the average tuition. You can see that the average uh, athletic award per teammate is, is pushed out there, and I net it out. So what does it actually cost to go to college for those people uh, that are playing softball and won scholarship on average at a particular university? So there's one thing that should jump out to you, that jumped out to me. Um, so I, I've harped a little bit on grades for you all. Um, each one of these things require two things. They require a certain number of academics and a certain amount of financial, right? Um, if, if you don't have either of those things, I believe junior college is a great option for you, even if it's for two years. You can get an education, you can play softball, and you can potentially transfer after two years with no real out-of-pocket colleges. So that would be division one within junior college. <coughs> A great option for kids. Any questions on what I did there? Can I ask a question? Sure. So that the... Oh, jeez. <laughs> So the, my question is around the uh, what you just described, the junior college, and you know, say two years and then transfer out, and then look to perhaps D1, D2. Are the same criteria uh, involved in that transfer time? So now you're two years into your college career. Do the options still exist for scholarships once you move into that D1, D2? So it's going to depend, obviously you have to be academically qualified and you have to be eligible for that. For example, NCA has an eligibility <coughs> clearinghouse for D1 and D2 students. Um, but the rules would be the same for D3. You would not be, you won't, there's no athletic um, scholarship available. <coughs> D1 and D2, I would believe you would, as long as you're qualified, you should be able to be to receive uh, typical scholarships. Someone else would, can you correct me? If you want? The, the only difference yeah, is... Okay. At all, at all three of those levels, when you transfer, the um, if you're looking anywhere, any kind of merit aid or aid that would come from the institution that's not athletic, the largest amount of money you can get is as a freshman. So even people who transfer, even say to a, a D2, um, the money that you would have gotten as a freshman, um, it, it would not be the same as you go through. Does that make sense? So. Um, Let's say that I decide I'm going to go to Kutztown, and um, as, a, as a D2 institution, um, I, I qualify for some of their uh, merit aid and take away the athletic aid, and it was, just to use a number, it was $5,000 as a freshman. Um, that same $5,000 may not be available to you as a transfer student. So the, uh, the money is different. Uh, but, and, it's, and it's the same way for us. Our, our, our packages are much more generous for freshmen than they are for transfer students. Great, thank you. Great question, by the way. Thank you. Any other questions over here? <coughs> so, um, we're, like I said, we're gonna step through some of the tactics and some of the resources to get you there. I've painted a picture of what it looks like in terms of your opportunities with some of your um, uh, the different uh, conferences and affiliations you can go through to, to get your education. Um, so we're going to keep going forward with this. Like I said, um, this does require work. This does not happen naturally. I, I want to be clear. 
if you think as an athlete that a coach is going to come knock on your door, ring your bell, and say, I want to talk to you about a scholarship, you are woefully uh, wrong on that topic. It's not going to happen. Each one of you in the room, if you want to get there, you're going to have to put some effort into it, and you'll get out exactly what you put into it. So, Rich, we want to go to the second. If you guys are, want to get your... <laughs> Classic. You're on the second row. So there is a new pin. You'll have to enter that one this time. Who's <coughs> first? Lexi. giving you this content. Uh, two, it varies by uh, division, D1, D2, D3, or organization, as you can see up there. It can also vary during the course of a year or from year to year. Honest question, or honest uh, observation, uh, Coach Mull and I went through yesterday the day before. Um, there was a rule question that I asked her, I said, at this event, if I understand the rules correctly, sophomores and freshmen cannot talk to you. That would be considered an off-campus um, discussion or conversation. Um, <coughs> to be honest, um, neither one of us are really certain of the answer, and she went to her compliance and got it. Anybody can talk to her tonight uh, if they'd like to. Um, like I said, I am not. Uh, I, I don't want. I, I don't want folks. I don't want to short this for folks. If you really want to know the rules of doing this, um, 
there are a tremendous amount of links in the address, including uh, calendar information. Um, each D1 and D2 have different calendars, quiet periods, etc. cetera. Uh, that's going to be uh, towards the end. There are actually more rules uh, broken down by the different divisions. Let me break this down into three important sort of approaches around the rules. And these are also, excuse me, based on things you can do that are positive. Number one, you can reach out to any coach at any time, at any division. You want to talk to a coach? Uh, it can happen, right? Let me give you an example of how this happened. Two years ago, we were playing the Pegasus Showcase, um, and Rio was pitching uh, in that game. Had a pretty decent game. Now, Drexel coach Carl Taylor uh, took his card, he gave it to one of our parents that's wearing Pegasus, and he said, I want that girl to call me. A little bit of skirting the rules, right? He can't call her. She was a sophomore, right? Um, so, I need to go further the story. So, uh, of course, um, Rhea says, I'm not calling this guy. I don't want to play D1. Like, okay, what if he's at the school that you want to be playing at in two years? Um, she said, okay, I'll do this. And she was clearly doing it for me. Um, and then I said, um, so I said, we'll email him and give him two times, today at this time and an hour later. Okay. And so she emailed him, and she said, he's, he's probably not going to be there, I'll call it. Of course, he picks up first ring and talks to her for, uh, I think it was 11 minutes, I wrote it down, uh, had a conversation with her. Now, let me tell you all something about that call, and coach backed me up on this. Every coach that you call already knows that you're absolutely terrified to call them, right? None of you even, I, I don't think half of you even know you can call people on your phone, to be honest. Uh, most of you want to do, I mean, this is why sometimes we want to break out of the, the texting and Snapchat, because there's going to be times you have hard conversations, right? I kid you not, the following winter, we're playing in Florida, Fort Lauderdale. Uh, we're in the lunch line. Guess who's in the lunch line and turns around and says, hi, Rhea. It was Carl Taylor from Drexel. Um, he's, he's still a Drexel, to my knowledge, so uh, it, it didn't work out in terms of connecting with a coach, but uh, it's a good story um, about how you should talk to coaches wherever you get the chance. I do. Um, I, I even talk to coaches' wives with Arizona State. Uh, we talk to uh, Craig Nichols' wives out, out there. Uh, talk to anybody you can. It's always a good source of information. Uh, the second one is you can always go to a college and try out. If you're interested in a school, um, you can't make their camp. If you are interested, please go to their camp, right? Now, a lot of parents are going to say, I can't keep out shelling out money for these camps. I'll show you a little bit later how there's, there's a way you can sort of vet some of that process. Some of it you cannot, right? If you're truly interested in a college, go to the camp. You're going to be in front of the coach, right? They're going to get to see you. Uh, you're going to be able to talk to them as much as you want. So you can always go and try out at a camp. Uh, or sorry, try out on, on, on campus, right? And the last piece of guidance I'm going to give you is you cannot really talk to any coach until your tournament is over, right? And Coach Mullen and I talked about this. Uh, I think most coaches are uh, very cordial. Um, if they can't talk to you, they're going to say, sorry, Con, I'm not allowed to talk to you. It's, it's, it's the way the rules are. Once your team is done for the day playing a tournament and you're dismissed, you can then talk to any coach at any level. Right? And if they're interested in you, they'll wait around and talk to you. Am I out of bounds here anywhere? I think this is very important to get um, a set of what I'm going to call target schools. You need to start putting a list together. Um, this list is going to be bigger than what you think. Right? I'm going to recommend, as a freshman, you make a list. 40 schools, right? Figure out, uh, and, and I, I see some wows in the crowd. So figure out the types of things, and you see the fundamental questions I have listed there. Can you meet it academically? Can I meet it? Can I afford this college? Does it have my major? Please don't go to a college camp if you know they don't have your major at that school, right? 
uh, you're probably wasting your time, right? Um, figure out your, link, your, your punch list. What's the size, location, major, like what are the things I'm looking for? I also recommend that you organize this list. Microsoft makes a wonderful product called OneNote. It's free to all of you. You can download it on your phones and you can share it with your parents. Unless you're one of the one or two hands that don't share things with your parents. Right? Um, to determine what that range should be for you from an athletic perspective, I'm going to say there's probably only three people in this room, and I apologize if I'm offending you, who can really help you assess your talent versus um, and where you should be looking education-wise, or athletic-wise. One's obviously Coach Mall because she's played there and she's, um, she's evaluating that talent now. I think internally as a resource, uh, Joe Harris is great at that, um, and has seen a lot of kids come through and seen them play at different divisions. I'd also say that Bill Loomis is also pretty um, well-versed at that. Plus the two ladies you see over here, uh, their sponsors, Michelle and Julie, right? You need to start that list and narrow it down. I can tell you, uh, I still have it. Uh, Rhea's list originally, I believe, was 30 schools. <clears throat> of her top four, three of them were not on that original list of 30, right? So I'm going to call that an outlier, right? Expect something unexpected as you go through this process. Expect a school to jump out at you, maybe wow you, unexpectedly. Be prepared for it. It does happen. Um, when you get to a, se a senior, starting your senior year, you really want to narrow that list down to five. How you do that with you and your parents is completely up to you, uh, your approach there. Um, I'm always happy to share um, what I've done there. But this concept of target schools is going to be important for all four years for you. Right? So let's get into that. <coughs> I already talked about, is it too early for freshmen, right? Or, if you're not a freshman yet, um, you're a pre-freshman, is there such a term? Uh, you can start doing these things, right? First of all, research, research some colleges, right? They actually have Instagram accounts, right? They have Twitter accounts. Add them, follow them, see what they're doing as a team. If you're really interested in a college, every college is going to have an online profile. You can go there and fill that out. Guess what? You're going to get invitations to every softball camp that's held at that college. Go visit any campus you can for any, <coughs> any wholesome reason, right? Um, if it's going to uh, a football game or going with another sibling, get your feet on campus. Start thinking about that list of schools. I'll give you some resources in the end, which help with that list, right? So there's a couple things you start to do uh, in your sophomore year. Uh, again, um, still working on those grades, right? Keeping them uh, in line. They're going to give you the most uh, amount of uh, <coughs> leverage when it gets to college time. Uh, do some more uh, looking at colleges online. Maybe attend a college uh, game of your choice. That's actually a great thing. We did, Bill, friend, we did um, early on the year 12s or 14s. We took the entire group to Westchester to watch a softball game. How many student athletes in here have not seen an actual live college game? Not on TV, that doesn't count. You've all been to a live game. Okay. So a few that haven't, right? Come on. <laughs> Fantastic, it's a great experience. Ask your coach to take you as a team building event, right? That, that'd be great. Um, and sometimes you can, you know, depending, you can maybe have a conversation with a player or a coach afterwards, depending on the, uh, the version. I talked a little bit about using uh, OneNote for this. This is an actual screenshot of some of the colleges, um, and this is the format that we used uh, to keep track of um, the different colleges uh, during Rhea's recruitment. So you can see, I have colleges listed the distance. We actually wrote down the distance drive time from our current house to there. We put a link to the softball page, listed out any softball camps that are there. Did I do the online form? I'm going to give you a word of warning about that online form. 
Um, we had an instance where we were looking at a school that we thought we were interested in. Um, the coach was upset that we did not do her online form. Now, we sent her an information packet. She saw my daughter play. Um, I thought it was a little quirky myself. Um, we're no longer communicating for that particular coach. Um, but it, it's one of those things like, you know, don't, don't get caught out on this. This is easy to do. Go fill out their form online. They all look the same. You'll get used to what they look like, right? Um, junior year, this is really your key time. Right? I, I talked a little about camps last year. Winter camps are coming up now. If you're a sophomore or freshman, go to a winter camp. Right? Go to one that you can learn a new skill at. You might even get to talk to a college coach while you're there. Right? Some of them have um, more than one college coach there. Some will have multiple colleges at one, co or at one camp. Um, so continue to do that. Um, when you're there, or when you're a junior, consider a service like Captain U, which is an on online recruiting service. Um, I'm going to go two hours. Um, when you also when you play in showcases, and you want to start by your junior year, you better be playing in showcases, right? It, when you get to a junior year, it can't be about friend ball. It's got to be about what do I want to do when I graduate high school? Do, do I want to do I want to seriously take this this on? Do I want to do a job or not do a job? Right? So you want to be in, in showcases. I can tell you that Joe is pushing your coach to get into quality showcases where coaches can see you. Um, All right, so I'm going to let you write something down, if you'd like. Uh, I called and pestered the Captain U people to help us out, hook us up for this. Uh, if you're interested in uh, a subscription, with that code right there, which expires on December 15th, you'll get 10% off Captain U. This won't be fluid, but I'm going to switch to my... This is Captain U, everybody has a log on a profile, right? So this is my daughter's profile. Um, this is what a college coach will see. So they can see your academics, you can see video. Uh, she has a video there, uh, her general information, more academics, the team she's on. She put some pictures up of uh, when they won championships. Um, these are kind of important. They're coaching endorsements from Previous coaches, you see Joe Harris is there. I think I had to buy a steak dinner to get that one done. Um, um, and there's actually um, she got a she got an endorsement from one of um, a former Pegasus player. Actually, uh, Sam Foraker wrote her um, an endorsement. Coach, where are you on endorsements? When you get, um, I, I've, I I'm sort of on the fence on this one as far as. Um, if you get somebody who maybe does recruiting for a college and writes a letter about, say, Nia Bond and says, these are the attributes I see of her, uh, is that something you want to see, or do you leave those out? I read them, but there's times when, when you get 400 emails leading up to a giant tournament that I may not be able to get through them, but I try. Um, and then sometimes it's helpful just to have the, the contact information, more of a reference, than the actual you know, written out paragraph because I do call references. Okay. I'm aware of that. Um, there's, I'm just going along the top here. So there's colleges. Um, so there are colleges you can put on here, and in our case, we made an A, B, and a C list. Uh, there are also colleges down here at the bottom that says, these are the colleges that are interested in me. So a coach can go into Captain U, look at your profile, and say, I'm interested in you. You don't have to reciprocate. You don't have to show interest back. And even if you want, if you're a little creeped out, you can block them, right? Uh, so you don't need to have them look at, look at you. So you can see, as a senior, you're having a fair amount of colleges to look, look at. Um, we organize the ABC list uh, kind of in a sanity measure. And I think you can all come up with something similar. But for us, it was like, 
Am I an active lead talking to the coach? Do they have my major? Uh, have I visited the college? And has the coach seen me play? We'd have to have all four of those things to get in the A list. Maybe two of those things in the B list, maybe one of those things in the C list. Sort of focused uh, on our energies is what I'm Events, you can list your tournaments you're playing, any uh, showcases you're in, um, or any uh, other activities. Uh, there is an email capability in here. So it's not unusual for a college coach to write you an email in your Captain U. Right? So how does this take place? They can send you a camp invite. My favorite is activity. Oh, look, Rhea, do you want to go to West Virginia Wesley College? <laughs> so uh, you can see just today, West Virginia Wesley Leland College uh, found Rhea in a search. Most of these are finding you in searches. Um, you get emails when these things happen. I'm trying to find something a little more interesting. So what the coaches are doing is saying, I'm looking for a left-handed pitcher in this class, right? Maybe in this geography, and they find you in a search. That's not very uh, informative, but if they go in and actually view your profile, you get notification of that. So you can see uh, Karen University has looked at Rhea's profile uh, twice in the same day, right? Actually, I'm sorry, one looked at the profile, one looked at the video. Right? You can start to piece together some things. If you just get a camp invite out of, out of nowhere, chances are you just got caught up in a list. Right? If you see a coach come in, look at your profile, or do a search from you, look at your profile, check out your video, then send you a camp invite, I can tell you that's probably the one you want to go to. Right? A lot of people, with apologies coach, look at these things as, as money grabs. Right? They're just trying to do fundraisers, right? But it is a chance for you uh, to get in front of um, the coach. Any questions about Captain U? I know that's a pretty quick run through. There are other services out there like NCSA and sport, sport recruits, etc. cetera. Um, I can jump out of this. Senior year, you're really just narrowing down your list. Um, that's where we're at. Um, you're actually applying to colleges, doing your merit aid. You should have already done with your SATs. Um, you really need to be ahead of all your peers in, in, in your classes because they're going to go to that. Now, I showed a little bit about um, videos uh, in Rita's profile. Here are some do's and don'ts about videos. Uh, I think videos are, are really important nowadays. Um, Coaches, um, not every school has a great budget for recruiting. So to get to see you play uh, might be tough for them. So having this type of information in a video, uh, videos can easily be sent. You can put them on YouTube. You can attach them to player profiles. You can um, put them in things like, like Captain U, right? So uh, all those things are capable. I want to say one thing uh, in terms of and I don't want to get off this slide, but in terms of doing a video, this is probably something you should do in your junior year. Um, make sure that your student isn't gassed uh, when they do this. Um, we made that mistake. Um, you want to show your, your skills, uh, your most important skills first. Uh, I put under 10 minutes. It should be more than 10 minutes. That's probably if you're a pitcher. If you're not a pitcher, you should be shorter than that. If you're a pitcher for seven pitches, Guess what? You're going to want to showcase all seven in the video. Right? It might take a little while. <coughs> Most important thing I can say about video is <coughs> Michelle's company, MJB Sports, does videos. Right? She is going to run a special for us if you want to engage her video. Um, Michelle, you want to give the details of what that is? I'll get you the mic. Uh, Michelle's uh, facility like I said is just down. Hi guys, so um, being your sponsor, I put together a little, um, I guess, deal for you guys. If you're interested in your recruiting videos, um, 
my husband's really good at that. I'm there just to kind of for support and help you guys out and to keep fouling off the ball, like make sure you extend and help you hit some line drives. But um, I'm offering a deal. It's three. Hold on a second. It's 300 for non-pitchers and 350 for if you're a pitcher. Um, and that's like four or more girls from Pegasus. We could offer that special deal for you. And we'll be more than happy to find a field for you. Or if you guys have a field too, that would be awesome. You could just email me. Um, you can go to our website too to see some of the sample videos we have, www.mjb-performance.com. Also, if you guys have any questions at the end, please feel free to ask me any questions you have. Yeah. Michelle or Coach, do you guys prefer <coughs> indoor videos, outdoor videos, or does it really matter? I guess whatever they yeah, whatever they feel comfortable with, it's just showing their what they have, what kind of skills they have. Thanks, Michelle. So I want to give you some strategies about when you actually get a chance to talk to a coach um, and sort of um, there's the how and the when, right? The when is going to be somewhat dictated by the rules. Um, I can tell you that there is a very disappointing response rate when you talk to coaches. I'm going to say it's about 20%. You send out 10 emails, you might get two hits back. <coughs> Don't let that discourage you. That person on the other end is getting flooded with emails. Now, you want to set yourself apart? Pick up the phone and call a coach. Again, <laughs> remember, they already know you're terrified to do that. <coughs> look at an act of bravery and that you can come through and do that. Another tactic, send a letter. You realize if you write a letter, you can put like a stamp on it and put it in the mailbox and it'll go out. Everybody still gets that, right? <coughs> um, I can tell you that, um, uh, that Rhea was very interested in a D2 school. It was absolutely getting ignored. Um, wrote a two-page letter to that school um, and led to some other activities. Sitting down and actually writing a letter and mailing it um, is, is, is a good thing to do. Um, don't ever in these initial com conversations mention the word scholarship. Um, because no coach is just going to say, oh, I know this name, let me give her a scholarship. Right? It's probably not going to put you on um, good footing for um, next steps. What you want to do is think about that packet for those 40 schools and the types of things that go in that. Now, uh, Pegasus already has a player profile. Um, if you're looking for other examples of there's other profiles out here. These are the key things excuse me, that you want to put in them. And working in a sales organization, I can tell you that whenever you have a communication or a meeting with a, uh, somebody uh, like a coach, you want to leave it with an actionable step. That could be as simple as saying, um, I'm going to give you a call back in a week to talk about this packet, but then you've got to follow through. Right? So leave, leave your packet when you deliver that, when you communicate with a coach, something that is actionable. If you, do, uh, if you do decide to come on campus, please, with advance warning, let the coach know. No coach wants a drive-by shooting at their school, right? They, they want to be prepared for you. And you know what? When you do that, you're going to actually force the coach's hand. Coach Mall is not going to want to be caught flat-footed knowing you're coming, knowing you have that she has your profile on her desk. She's going to want to ask you some good questions. So she's going to go through, you're going to force her hand to look at your packet just by going to the school. Right? Start doing that early. Have those conversations with college coaches before they really become meaningful. Right? <coughs> so also sometimes when you do contact a coach, if you're under, I believe, a sophomore, and you write them a letter, they really can't respond to you. They can send you a general invite to camp. You can get that anyhow by putting a, or signing up on their online, um, <clears throat> their online uh, flyer that gives you information about you as a, as a, uh, as a player, student athlete. 
Another good thing about communicating with coaches is call them ahead, or call them, write them ahead of your sh or your tournaments. Um, Coach Malls in Wilkes-Barre, right? If you're playing in Allentown, um, in a tournament up there, sit down and figure out the distance it is from Allentown to every coach that I'm, every school that I'm interested in. Coach Mall should fall under that net, right? No coach is probably going to drive more than two hours, right? So think about this. Most coaches are not going to go two hours to, um, um, to come see you play, uh, typically. So when you send them a letter, let them know what your schedule is, what fields you're going to be on, and what time you're going to be playing, right? Um, don't worry about whether or not you're going to be playing at a particular time. A coach will ask you. If the coach shows up and wants to see you play, they will talk to your coach. And if your coach is doing their job, they're going to get you in the game. Right? So that person can be seen. Um, I talked about different timelines um, and posting and some sort of uh, sort of uncomfortable decisions that, that you can get into. I want to bring up something that uh, that may uh, that may rub the board the wrong way, but uh, one thing I think is very valuable. <coughs> so we have um, probably the premier tournament here for getting a college coach exposure, unfortunately, is the Pensbury tournament. It's held, uh, held by the Pensbury Gens organization. Um, but I can give you a strategy for that. If your team is not playing in that tournament, and recently Pegasus has not played in that tournament, it is one of the biggest showcases because it has uh, camps where they evaluate you there. It's NC National, NC, F, help me, some letter. Some four letter word. NFCI. Thank you. Um, affiliated um, and gets a tremendous number of coaches. So two years ago, I got to torture my daughter by making her play uh, on a team from New Hampshire, right? So they have a pickup list, pick up players. Understand when the tournament is, and if you're a sophomore or junior, put your name on that pickup list. They're like, well, they're not gonna play me. Right? Last year, she played on a team from Colorado that flew the whole way in here without a <coughs> single pitcher. She pitched in every game. Her and another girl, they split. They both, they both, uh, they both stopped in that. And the number of coaches there, um, it's really worth your time. Right? So understand when that is. It's in your. It's going to be in the resources here. Uh, that would definitely be a tournament that you want to get in, even if it's a pickup player. If you're really going to do a job. That's the type of thing you're going to have to do. You're going to have to step on a team where you know no one. But guess what? You go to college, it's probably going to be the same thing. Right. Any questions about that? Hey, you Joe. Uh, so Joe is telling me that 18U Purple is actually in. So if you want to guest, go guest for them. If they need players, I don't know. The, the pickup player list comes out well in advance of the tournament. You need to go there and look at it and put your name down, and they call right away. We have chances, uh, we have chances from the Colorado team, uh, it's a team from Washington State, and another team from uh, like Rhode Island. Um, I'll, I'll, let, I'll let Coach Mall uh, correct me if there's anything wrong here on this sheet, but these are the types of things that college uh, coaches are looking for. Uh, I think, though, the good one on here is, how do you handle striking out? What are they going to see there? Um, one, of the, one of the questions I asked uh, Coach Mall when she was recruiting my daughter was, tell me what you know about my daughter. Then I get that long, awkward silence. Let's see if I can put her under pressure to answer. You'll be amazed about what a college coach will tell you about your daughter, the things they've observed the work they've done to figure um, out what your daughter is all about. I know some, this is an old story, but I know some college coaches that go and sit by the food stand. They want to see how you interact with uh, the food staff. They want to see how you interact with your player, or with your, with your parents. Um, parents, don't ever pick up your kids' equipment. Don't ever bring them a water bottle, right? 
because that is in their purview. They should be doing that themselves, right? You, as players, uh, you don't you don't want to appear lazy, right? You you want to definitely own all your equipment and show that you're independent enough to, to stand on your own. Anything you'd like to add? That is a big deal, by the way. The constant giving of the Gatorade over the fence, big red flag. And it's not just me. There's a lot of we talk about that all the time. The, and the whining for the Gatorade or the not wanting to carry your own bag, those are just quick red flags, walk away. Hey, look, I don't think there's a, I don't think there's a Pegasus coach in here that wants you talking to your parents once the game starts anyhow, right? So don't do it, right? Mommy, Daddy can't bring your water or everything. You want to stay safe? <coughs> yeah? Right, not to the backtrack. Uh, maybe touch my answer the question. I think I know the answer already, but is there anything specific that the girls can do and when they write their letters that you look for that can help them stand out. I mean, I kind of always encourage my girls to do their homework before they send a letter out to any coach and make their letters personal. Yes. Hey, coach. Yes. I just want to repeat the question in case you didn't hear. So, uh, Coach, you ask if uh, there's anything that um, his students can do to help their letters stand out. I'm sorry, his student athletes uh, stand out if there's anything can do there. First thing, you get my name right. That helps. Um, we have a, there's a running joke, a lot of us, we just forward emails to each other that we're supposed to go to other coaches. Um, I've been called Kathy from E-Town a few times, uh, Judy from Goodstown. People just forget when you guys are doing your emails and you just switch the name out. Make sure that you do that every email. That helps. Um, after that, um, some of the big things that you want to put up front, uh, he covered that. One of the biggest things that I didn't see up there was Put your major if you know what it is. Um, like he said, if, if you want a major that I don't have, that's going to let me know right away that I'm not going to be able to put you on my list to go see you. Um, also, the I've been playing since I was five years old, and I've done this, and so on and so forth. And four paragraphs later, you let me know that you're going to be at the whatever tournament. I, I don't need the first four paragraphs once I get to that. And there's a lot of us that don't. And I know that they tell you to write all of that. But keep it brief. Who you are, when you graduate, um, do you are you aware of of who I am and what our school is? Um, definitely, like he said, you know, mentioning scholarships and things like that. Big one was in the I've had that before. I'm kind of happy to give you I'd love to, but I don't have any. Um, I, I would just keep it simple, um, but definitely if you could find a way to stand out from other people, uh, and and everybody's different in a good way. Uh, in a good way yes, in a positive way. Um, something that's going to catch my eye when I'm going through all of those emails. Um, so, you know, me copying and pasting something from my website and throwing it in the first paragraph, you know, a lot of people have been doing that lately. They tell them that. I can see that. I've been on my own website. I know what it says. Um, there's just a, a way, hey, coach, I saw you at the such and such a couple of weeks ago. Or, you know, uh, there's a girl on your team that plays at the high school that I played against or something like that. Just anything to catch my attention. And that's, that's usually the, the best way to do that. Um, but I cannot express enough. Keep it simple and short. Thank you. You're welcome. Brad, another question for Coach Mom. Um, you know, yes. With regards to like the Casting You and some of these other um, websites, how are you using that tool? Are you, is that, I have a specific spot I want to um, the, the man that I learned from like, coaching and, and recruiting in college was very old school. He didn't use any of that. And so I went, the way that I learned, we didn't use any of that unless it was just kind of somebody sent us a link, we'd click on it and look at it. So for the most part, I, I use those to gather information. <coughs> So if somebody gives me, a, if I get an email or a name or something, I'll probably pull that up from a Captain U and NSR or you know any number of other options. And I use that to look at GPA, SAT, where are you from, what position do you play, that kind of stuff. That helps me um, in the narrowing down process. Um, up until recently, I wasn't a, a fan of Captain U, but then they recently integrated with my recruiting software, which was a big deal, um, but for the most part, I didn't because on Captain U, a lot of people will sign up for that initial free, um, whatever they give you, you know, uh, without having the, the big package, and just put a name and then nothing else. So I kept clicking on these things and there was nothing there. 
and it, and so the other the other issue I had was when they when you email me through Captain U and NSR and field level and all of that, I then have to log into their website. So when I'm going real quick, um, I don't always remember all of the passwords for those things, and it's it's, it's cumbersome. So I would say that um, if you use if you use those things, I would you know it's very good to keep them updated um, because we do we do use them. That's also a great place to keep your video. So if I'm looking for that, um, but if you if you want to email us. Um, email us directly and then just it's easier to get to that um, but you, it's more of a, a place for us to go in my opinion um, and that's I know there, a lot of us have discussed that and there was also some issues where they were telling people this coach has looked at your profile I've never looked at that kid's profile so that was there were some questions about that and I actually did I called Captain Yu and I asked them why and he said, oh, well, there's an algorithm or a something or other. And I was like, okay, well, I just want to make sure, don't tell people I'm looking at them and climb off. Um, and he, he answered my question satisfactorily. So, yeah. yes? I have a question. I don't know if it's well or not, but is, are you looking at high school uh, players at all? Or have you even bothered going to high school games anymore? I like high school games. Uh, again, the gentleman that I learned from was very old school. Um, high school nowadays is the only place where anybody competes. Um, they changed some of the um, showcase tournaments so that on Sunday there's a single elimination or it means something. But for for high school, it's you're playing towards something at the end of the year, um, and it, it, it in my opinion it it shows me what you can do. And also, you can't your high school coach can't choose who's on the team. So some people might be a pitcher with no defense behind her whatsoever. And it's very interesting to go out and see how does she handle that. Um, you know, or you could be the best shortstop in the world and, or a great defense and no pitching whatsoever. So you're going to get clobbered by ground balls and line drives, and I like to see that kind of thing. Obviously, though, your season, the high school season, is during my season. So um, I'm very fortunate. We have a very nice stadium, so the PAAA championships are played at our stadium. So I go sit up in my press box, and I watch the teams as they come through. But I definitely, if we have a day off, um, and there's a high school game, I, I'll go to that. But I also like, uh, we, we do the showcases, obviously, we're all there every weekend because I can say, hey, can you put that kid back out there and put her over there and do that. So, but there is, there's a lot of us that go, and sometimes I go to the high school games and I, I hide. And I watch, I watch what's going on, I watch the parent interaction and things like that. So, you see blue or gray hiding in the bushes. <laughs> this might be me, but yeah. So. Yeah, this is a typical modus operandi. She was at two of these tournaments. I didn't know she was there. Never. I like to make sure the people I bring in are, you know, going to fit in what we're doing. And we do a lot by just sitting and watching. Thank you. So we're going to quickly push to the last two slides here. Um, a couple do's and don'ts um, when you're uh, in the recruiting process. Um, I, a lot of these we've covered already. Um, I, I think. Uh, I think one of these is Coach Loomis is uh, saying that he, you know, if if you're if you're on time, you're late, right? So get there, get there early. Um, if a coach actually asks you for information, uh, you should be ecstatic and you should turn that around as quickly as possible. <coughs> Let's say they ask you for a video. I don't have a video. Okay, when do you plan to get one done? Right? You can tell them I'm going to have a video here done here. Michelle's going to turn around in 24 hours. Um, and then uh, I'll have a team the following day. Yeah. Um, again, you're, you're going to get some of these. Um, um, part of this uh, part of this process is coming here tonight. You know, don't don't stop learning about recruiting. I, I absolutely uh, enjoy it, um, and and working that role for the organization. It's, it's a lot of fun, uh, and things are always changing. There's always some great. Stories. Uh, I think the last one is um, don't take any rejections you get personally. Right? You're going to have more no's than yeses through this process. Um, use that as a way to filter your list and drop it down. Um, now you're going to have all your energy divided by sort of less less schools and opportunities. So I just want to you know here are some of the things that are in the resources um, that I'll send to you. Um, I have uh, recruiting, um, recruiting sites in here. 
college rules, more than you ever wanted to know about um, the college rules at different areas. Um, some other good books, Coach Ron, thank you. Um, this is a great um, book. I even read the edition two editions ago, uh, Preparing to Play Softball at the Collegiate Level. Is that up there? Yeah, it's the number one. So the number one is a great uh, book to get from the N uh, FCA. Um, a lot of these are download or, or online books, some great resources. Uh, apart from that, um, feel free to uh, write me or use me as a resource. Uh, I'm, I'm happy to ha help you out. I put my res or my email address, that's my organizational email address at Pegasus. I'm happy if you're, you want to write me a question. I, I don't even know where to start in terms of colleges, right? I can help ask you some questions and give you some tools to start getting some things narrowed down. With that, I want to spend the remaining time and invite um, Julie, Michelle, and Coach Mall up front. I'll even ask my daughter to come up and have a seat in the in the chairs up here. I know we've had some questions uh, asked previously, but I thought maybe we um, do some other questions. If you have a question you're dying to ask the panel about the recruiting process, uh, I will actually ask one. Right, very good. Ask one to get us started, um, and then we'll go from there. Fair enough. Then we'll get out of here in about 15, 20 minutes. So one of the things I didn't have on slides tonight, I cut slides out, uh, was around conditioning. And I've heard that um, the level of conditioning you'll do in college will be roughly twice what you do uh, in, in the high, at the high school level. Um, so for pretty much all of you, especially the college alum and coach, um, as you transition from high school to college, what were your prior conditioning program, and how did it compare to what you experienced in college? Is there any guidance you can give us for the audience? Okay, so um, in, I went to Coatesville High School and we had a pretty good, I guess, conditioning program there, but it was, um, I think it started, well, obviously in the winter, and, but by the time I went to college, I had my first conditioning workout and I almost died. It was pretty hard, but um, we, I didn't really work out before here and there on my travel team. We. We didn't really do much of that, but now I look back and I'm like, if we did those conditioning workouts over the winter, I think that would that would have helped me be more prepared. But then, obviously, as we keep going throughout the years um, in college, you get better and better and stronger. So make sure you guys are doing something now. Start earlier so you don't die when you're in um, a freshman in college. Um, I think I had the same experience. I didn't have much of a high school uh, conditioning routine at all, but I was on three teams, so that was my conditioning. My working out was just the practices every night. Um, going into college, first uh, tryout, I think I had an asthma attack. That's how um, intense I feel like it was. and. I wish I learned from that, but I don't think I did because um, in the summer, in between years, I just pitched and practiced and thought that that was how I was going to get better. But I did the minimal um, working out that my coach gave us in the off season. Um, after I graduated was when I got into CrossFit, and looking back, like Michelle said, every single day I wish that I started this then, especially in high school, um, because not only am I stronger and more conditioned, but it has prepared me and just changed me mentally, um, and it's taught me so many things about pushing myself, about not giving up, um, that I wish I you know, learned then, and I think it's so important to learn those things as a you know, young athlete, especially being a pitcher. A lot of those things I learned now, I wish I, I learned then. So I would say get out there and try to condition yourself, whether it's circuit training, um, go outside, try not to just go into Planet Fitness and do the machines. Like actually go out and run, and you know, you have a ton of resources here, people that can help you do different workouts than just the <coughs> boring machines at Planet Fitness. Um, I was on a travel ball team that really 
kicked the crap out of us on a weekly basis, and I still was not ready for college. I got there, and I think I ran, I had to run three miles every morning for almost three weeks. I almost didn't make it. <coughs> um, it was brutal, and but and I don't do that. We, uh, <laughs> we, there's no purpose to that, in my opinion. Um, but uh, yeah, that was awful. Um, we do, but for at Wilkes, we've actually um, integrated CrossFit into our uh, practices. We use them as finishers. Uh, we call them finishers because after you've had a really hard college practice for two hours, uh, we then throw 15 to 30 minutes of CrossFit at you. And if you can finish that, then the seventh inning of the game is meh, nothing. Um, and it, it helped tremendously last year, but a lot of girls came in and they, weren't, they were not ready for that. It is. For all of us, it doesn't matter how prepared you are, it's, it's still pretty <coughs> brutal because you're tired on top of it from all your academic uh, activities and, um, and your sleep patterns also change. But, yeah. So. Anybody else? Anybody have a question? Let me get the mic to you. I don't need the mic. Oh, I'll be all right. <laughs> uh, just in the spirit of uh, trying to dispel some myths, uh, we talk a lot about the attending the showcases and the writing the letters. In terms of percentages, how would you say you would recruit um, girls that you establish relationships with versus girls maybe that just happen to be there um, and yet you spot at the, the point? Just to give them an idea of how important that is to target. Most of the players that we bring in, I establish some kind of relationship in one avenue or another. Um, we, in Division Three, people writing me as an eighth grader or a freshman. It doesn't mean that you're going to, you know, be able to join us in four years or whatever, because all sorts of things can happen. But we can at least start to, get to know you, and the way we do that is you come on campus and that kind of thing. Um, some people, uh, we we see them for years, uh, going to the showcases, things like that. Um, but there has been times when I've gone to a showcase and I, was, I pull up the profile and I look at the SATs and the GPAs and everything, and I, you know, wipe, wipe out the ones that I can't even talk to, and then, um, and then I look up and I kind of look around. If there's somebody that stands out, then, then we start the relationship. So it can, it can go either direction. You can, you can initiate it, or we can initiate it. Um, but I would say, for the most part, um, to even get us out to the games, you've got to, you've got to email us, and sometimes you've got to email us often um, and for a while, because, like he said, we get bombarded. I went to a tournament. I went to a tournament two weeks ago in Southern California. Um, there were, in the three-day period, there were over 1,200 games. Um, and the number of teams, and just my putting my name on the list, I got, and I'm just a little tiny D3, I've got almost 75 to 100 emails a day. I don't know what to do with all these. Um, but so, during that period, Pensbury, same way, we put our name on the list, and then it's just, we get slammed and bombarded. So if, if there isn't something that stands out, we may not be able to go out and see you. Some of those smaller tournaments we like to go to because they're manageable. Um, and, um, and then sometimes if we have a relationship with you, and as I know many of you know, if there's five or six tournaments going on, you know, say New York, New Jersey, PA, all in the same area, <coughs> which happens all the time, if, if we have a relationship with you, I'm, that may determine which tournament I go to. Do you have experiences when you're in your Um, so I guess I could tell you guys how I got recruited. Um, I actually didn't have, I went to Indiana University of Pennsylvania and I did not, I didn't even really know about the school, it wasn't on my list. Um, never had a relationship with the coach because I didn't know anything about them. I forget which showcase tournament it was, but I made a diving play and I, me and, I was playing shortstop and me and the second base collided. I caught the ball, and I probably shouldn't have went back in the game, but I knew that there was college coaches there, and I went back in the game, but if you guys have a, feel like you have a concussion, do not go back in the game. But I think I had a concussion that day, but yeah, Jessica, make sure you don't go back in the game if you have a concussion. But yeah, so I actually didn't have a relationship with the coach when I got recruited, but they're always out there watching you, so give it all you got. I don't need a mic either.
Um, you talk about coming on campus. What time of the year? Because obviously, I don't think you want them to come during your softball season. Or, or is that when you want it's them to come? a wonderful time to come. Okay. okay. I didn't know if you wanted them to come, like, separately, so you had more time to talk to them. Like, what, what kind of thing? Like, how does that work? Um, I, other than the week of finals, like, you know, because it's really boring and everybody's running around like a crazy person, um, there's, there's no bad time. I mean, there might be a bad day for me personally, just because there's something else going on, but if, um, if you email me and you let me know, hey, we are very interested in the next couple of weeks or any time this fall or whenever, we'd love to, to come out. Um, you can come over the summer, um, but obviously a campus during the summer is going to look very different than a campus in the middle of the fall. Um, but it, you know, like you said, don't don't snipe us. Don't just show up. Um, that does happen, believe it or not. Um, and if you if you schedule something through admissions, definitely make sure that you. Uh, reach out to the coach because admissions may not always know, you know, that you're looking to talk to the softball coach. But there's not, um, I'm pretty open and flexible with that stuff. I know there's other people that aren't, but for the most part, you know, we, I would love to have you come out and we'll take you around in the morning, <coughs> feed you lunch, show you a bit, and then come out to a game or come out to a practice. Um, and, and all of us, almost all, all of us, all divisions, if you're on campus, we can talk to you. So that's the, that's the, he did mention that in the presentation. So that's, even if you're younger than the limits for all everything else, so that's a good way. If you can get a hold of us to tell us that you're coming, it's a wonderful way to get to know us as, as people. Thank you. You're welcome. Anyone else? Right. Uh, each of, the, each of you have been through the recruiting process and have, have selected a school. Can you tell us what went into your final decision to select the school you went to? one over the other? Um, for me, I went to Elizabethtown College and um, I had narrowed it down first by major, um, then by division. I knew I wanted to play Division Three. I liked the um, flexibility of everything. Uh, and then by distance. Um, so Elizabethtown was a great pick for me. Um, I had a great recruiting experience with my coach. Um, she sought me out in a tournament. We stayed in touch. She came to a high school game of mine um, and invited me to the school. I did a uh, college tour. I did it overnight. I basically tried to do as much as I could to get to know the coach, to get to know the players, to get to know the school. Um, and once I kind of fell in love with all that, that's really how I made my decision based off of all of the avenues that I tried to take. Um, you know, watch the team play. I tried to go to their practices. Um, I talked to as many girls as I could just to see what their experience was on the team and if they had a good, you know, good time playing, if they liked the coach. Um, so I just tried to get as much information as I could um, when I was happy with that. That's how I made my decision. Uh, well, I guess this is a good time to say that I did commit to Wilkes recently. definitely started at the beginning of my freshman year, although I've been going to camp since I was 11. <laughs> 11? That's like 11. <laughs> um, mine did start with, Captain Yu was a huge uh, asset to that, I would say. Um, obviously, you saw my Captain Yu profile, but I did narrow down all of my schools, starting from roughly 30, and I'll be completely honest, <coughs> Wilkes wasn't on my list for the majority of the time. Okay. <laughs> um, and she had reached out to me after a tournament saying that she saw me and really liked what she saw and asked me to come to campus and meet her and just see the school and at that point in my head I had already thought I knew I was going somewhere else so I almost did not come but I listened to my mother my mother's advice and I decided to come and it was by far the best campus I've been to. Best coach, best softball. I did my overnight, and before we had even gone to the football game that night, I think I decided that that was a school for me. Okay, so um, I guess we can start with, I know a lot of girls are like, I don't know, I guess everyone thinks they want to go to Division One. Division One's the best, Division One this, Division One that. 
I guess I was there at that time when I was in maybe my like sophomore year. And then I, visit, I visited some Division I colleges. I went on campus and I'm like, oh my God, like totally overwhelmed. It was a humongous campus and I did do more practices and I just couldn't commit to, I love softball so much and I've done it my whole life, but it just wasn't for me for Division I. Um, went to some Division II schools and IEP was not on my list. They talked to Judy Law from Cutstown. She would, me and her kept going back and forth and she wanted me to pitch for them. And I was, I was a good middle infielder and a good pitcher and I said, well, if I like would go to your school, she said you probably wouldn't pitch until like your sophomore or junior year. But I, if I was going and making that commitment and practicing and being there with the team, I wanted to play all four years. So I guess um, I didn't want to go there because of that reason. I wanted to play. I love softball. Um, I, I, IUP wasn't on my list. Then I, my senior year, um, I made that diving play and there was IUP contacted me and Adelphi. It's, they're out of Long Island, New York. And they contacted me, the Adelphi coach just like nagged me, like emailed me, called me, texted me, and like just wouldn't leave me alone. And I'm like, all right, this coach is out of there like it just drove me crazy I'm like if he's doing this who knows what kind of coach he'll be and then I ended up going to IEP and it was the best decision of my life it um, evens out the practice and and the work too it was it was great so I think just to follow up but I think both Julie and Rhea had offers at schools above the level that they ended up doing can you talk a little bit about what your decision between D2 versus D3? Um, <coughs> oh, Ithaca. D3. Oh, D3. I don't know that. But I feel like when I was recruited from Ithaca um, and I went up and talked to their coach, it just seemed a lot more rigorous than um, Elizabethtown. And not that I didn't have an, a rigorous experience. like. Our practices were intense. They were two and a half hours every single day. I mean, you're, we're only allowed a certain amount of days in the, in the fall. Um, but as soon as we got back from winter vacation, it was every single day. And we had to work around the basketball schedule. So sometimes we practiced from 10 p.m. to 12 a.m., actually 12.30. So we wouldn't be getting back to our dorms until close to 1 in the morning and having to wake up soon after the next morning for school. So it was intense. I mean, just because you're going to D3, that's doesn't mean that it's not hard. You have to work just as hard. The only difference I felt um, was that it's just a little bit more of a commitment. I feel like with D2, it's like school, then softball, and that's really it. With D3, I feel like it's school, softball, and maybe a little bit extra freedom here and there. And Division One, I, I feel like, is your softball, softball first, your sport first, and that's really it. So I like Division Three because I feel like it gives you a little bit of flexibility, but and I still had to work hard. I remember days and nights where I just felt exhausted, but that's part of it. I mean, if you love the sport, then you'll do it because <coughs> you love it. If we have another question, we'll take one more, and that will be it for the night. I'd love to hear a question from the girls, and younger girls, older girls. There has to be a thousand things going through your mind, no matter what it is. Throw it out there. You have a panel of experts here to answer a question for you. Take advantage of it. No pressure. Does, any, does anybody want to play in college? I know you guys are kind of told to be here, but does anybody actually want to play in college or raise your hand? No? Yeah? Kind of? Someone on this side, anybody, anybody here looking at um, playing college? Not sure. Your hand has to be above your head for me to see it. Thank you. I think we'll, uh, I think when, I think, uh, my dad told me I had to play two sports or I had to get a job. So, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, played I like two your sports. dad already. Right. Yeah, I played, I played two sports. Uh, I played basketball for two years and soccer for two years. Um, but it was basically.
basically just to get in shape for softball. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just uh, growing up basketball and softball, but once I got into high school, it was all softball. I have no college experience, but I've never played another <laughs> sport like I played softball. <laughs> That's my only sport. My dad was like Coach Mole's dad. I never played any other sports in college, but I did. I had to play another sport, so it was volleyball, indoor track, basketball was all flat, but yeah. <laughs> any other questions? Yes, Bill. Coach, how do you handle multi-sport athletes? Um, that's a big thing in Division Three. We we can do that in Division Three. Um, we've had plenty of them. We don't really have an issue. Um, so I just graduated a senior who played four years of volleyball. She was a captain on the volleyball team. She played four years of softball. She was captain on the volleyball team. Um, basically, they just uh, they don't participate with us in the fall because she's playing volleyball. And then as soon as they're done, um, she picks up and does our off-season training with softball and then um, does the spring with us. The more difficult ones are the sports that kind of butt up against each other. Um, so we've, I had a player, um, Sarah Bertrand, who you met, um, she's, she did two years and did basketball and softball. Um, and it was a double major and went um, internationally to go to school and it was insane. Um, but she did, she did the first two years, but it would... If the longer that the sport that you play first goes, the more it eats into that season. So I know some coaches um, won't allow you to do that. We do. Um, we also have a very good relationship with our other coaches, and they, you know, we exchange, and we don't really have a problem with that. But it's hard. It's a lot. Um, but it, definitely don't let that deter you if that's something that you want to do. Nobody else. It's so, hard. So, <laughs> Coach, one thing that uh, I know we've done, uh, no Bill and Fran, I've done as coaches. We've had girls work out for us and maybe not quite make the cut for the team that we were looking for for one reason or another. We would uh, take it upon ourselves to try and find them a home. What's the coaching fraternity or sorority like in terms of um, if you find a player you think is of good character but it's just not a fit for you guys, maybe it's academically, athletically, etc. Do you aid in that? Do you sort of pull in and try and find players at home? <coughs> We, we do that all the time. <laughs> we do that all the time. Um, there's a lot of us. Basically, every weekend you see us at those tournaments. We all see each other. And we all talk to each other. And some of us play together or went to school together. I still play in the summer in a women's league. And I play with other coaches. So we have plenty of time to talk to each other. And um, there are times when if we don't have somebody that's a fit for us, um, we, we recommend. I just did that. A week ago, there was a kid I was watching, and she was still had she didn't have a home somewhere to go to yet, um, and she was phenomenal. Um, I couldn't have got her into Wilkes, but I, I called one of the uh, one of my friends at a D two who could have gotten her in, and um, they had her on campus this week. Um, so it, it happens a lot, and but also we also talk to each other about a lot of things. So um, you know, just make sure that you're always telling the truth, and you're always you know upfront with us because we do talk to each other. Um, about a lot, and it surprises people sometimes that if two schools are, are recruiting a player, they're usually pretty shocked that we've probably already talked to each other about it, and we usually know. Um, so, but yeah, we do we do aid and, and help them help help other people. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. We got we got to put a wrap on this because time restraints. First of all, I want I want to thank our panel up here. There's a wealth of knowledge and information up here. Round of applause for you. guys for taking time out of your schedule, parents and, and girls alike. Um, this is an important part. Um, being in this organization already shows your commitment to what you want to do. Um, taking, taking two, three hours out of your night for something like this, I, I appreciate you coming, so thank you for that as well. Um, the other thing I have to thank Brett, I, I've been doing this about 15 years now, and I've probably been to at least a dozen of these recruiting events. This is probably the best one that I've ever been to. Thank you, Brett. Thank you, Brett. for giving us this um, this environment here. It's a beautiful facility and uh, you know for the letting us use it. So uh, safe travels back and thank you. Thank you for coming.